Hi, I am Dr. Goodmanson. This video contains supplemental material intended for my students in my aircraft design classes at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, where I currently teach. The video features excerpts from my textbook, General Aviation Aircraft Design, Applied Methods and Procedures, now also available in a Chinese translation. The book is available online from a large number of outlets, including Elsevier and Amazon. It is recommended for anyone interested in the design of general aviation aircraft. Greetings fellow aircraft designers. In this video I'll continue to work on the light sport aircraft from videos past. The third video demonstrated that the configuration I devised was altogether unacceptable. It had a stalling speed of almost 60 kcas, some 15 knots above the LSA requirement. It was unable to trim at 45 kcas with the center gravity at the quarter cord of the mean geometric cord. In short, it had too small a wing and too small a horizontal tail volume. It was really too bad to bother with further. We have come to a point where we need more firepower for this design. I could spend exorbitant amount of time trying to fix this, that and the other thing, but this is not how engineers do things. If one understands what's going on, one can apply far more effective means. That's what we are going to do in this video. Of course, more firepower simply means mathematics. First, let's consider the stalling speed. The maximum lift coefficient for the failed design was determined in part 3 of this video series and found to be 1.38. Using this with the lift equation, where I'm shooting for a gross weight of 1320 pounds, it is easy to show that the resulting stalling speed will be 59.5 kcas. But I can transform the question and ask, given a CL max of 1.38, how large must the wing be in order to provide a stalling speed of 45 kcas? Solving the lift equation for the wing area, S, and plugging and chugging the appropriate parameters, this shows we will need some 139.4 square feet. This is almost two times larger than our previous wing area of 79.7 square feet. For simplicity, I am going to round this value to 140 square feet. Knowing the wing area, we can tailor the wing to yield some desired properties, such as aspect and taper ratios. Here I'm going to assume a common aspect ratio of 7 and taper ratio of 0.6 for the wing. Using the methodology of section 9.2.3 in my book, we can calculate the wingspan B, root chord, C sub R, tip chord, C sub T, mean geometry chord, C sub MGC, and its position on the wing, Y sub MGC. This is far more pinpointed than the trial and error approach. We can take this a step further and perform a minimum drag optimized tail design using method 3 of section 11.5 in my book. In part 2 of this video series I mentioned a horizontal tail volume of 0.7 and vertical tail volume of 0.04 for typical single engine general aviation aircraft. These values were obtained in table 11-4 in the book. They represent the averages of typical certified aircraft in this class, which implies that if they are good enough for those aircraft, well, they should be good enough for our aircraft too. We should at least check them out and see if our airplane does any better than the first version. Note that I expect you to read on your own the assumptions and mathematics behind these formulas. Next, apply equation 11-56 in the textbook to calculate the required tail arm. Method 3 assumes the position of the centroids of the areas representing the horizontal and vertical tails along the x-axis are close to one another. This gives a common tail arm of 13.27 feet. Now, since we know the desired horizontal and vertical tail volumes, we can determine the resulting tail areas using equations 11-57 and 58. Here we get 33.71 and 13.21 square feet, respectively. We now go back to section 9.2.3 to estimate the span, root, and tip course for the horizontal and vertical tails. Starting with the horizontal, a common aspect ratio is about 4. I'm going to use the same taper ratio for the horizontal as that of the wing for a simple reason, aesthetic harmony. The resulting span for the horizontal is 11.61 feet, root cord is 3.629 feet, and tip cord is 2.177 feet. I am also going to consider a dedicated stabilizer and elevator configuration. 
I want an elevator that is approximately one third of the cord of the horizontal tail and has a straight hinge line. It goes without saying that it is the designer's prerogative to control the geometry. Here we want to look ahead and think about manufacturing. It turns out that manufacturing an elevator with a single or common hinge line is much easier than if one insists on a dual hinge line configuration. A common hinge line results in a simple and direct connection between the left and right elevators. It satisfies the engineering adage, always pick the simplest solution that does the job. Dual hinge lines are usually unavoidable for fast aircraft with swept lifting surfaces. That's different. Our airplane, in contrast, is slow. Dual hinge lines simply complicate things. Anyway, this is how I plan to lay out the aircraft's horizontal surface. Let's treat the vertical tail in a similar fashion as the horizontal, but with an aspect ratio of 1.2 and the same taper ratio, 0.6. I am going to split up the vertical as well into a fin and a rudder. Again, we go to section 9.2.3 in the book and now determine the geometry for the vertical tail. The only difference is that I want the leading edge of the vertical to have a 40 degree sweep. Why? Because I like it. That's all there is to it. Luckily, Mother Nature allows plenty of room for aesthetics in design. We should all be thrilled about it. The world will be pretty boring otherwise. Anyway, the resulting span for the vertical is 3.981 feet, root cord is 4.147 feet, and the tip cord is 2.488 feet. Now it's time to start to think about how to implement these changes in surfaces. The program's modeling philosophy is best summarized as create points to which we attach vectors to which we stitch surfaces. Thus, it is best to convert the aforementioned information into points. You'll see shortly what this means. Consider this diagram which shows a top-down view of the right wing and right horizontal tail. The tail arm we calculated earlier is denoted by L sub t. It is the distance between the quarter cord of the wing's mean geometric cord and that of the horizontal tail. We want to convert this into corner points for all surfaces. Thus, it would be better if we knew the distance between the leading edge, or apex points, of the root cords of the wing and horizontal. This is denoted here as L sub W H T. To do this, we must establish the other dimensions in the diagram. This is done using the formula shown. Then note that the distance from the wing apex to the quarter cord of its mean geometric cord can be calculated as L sub W H T plus the distance from the apex of the horizontal tail to the quarter cord of its mean geometric cord minus the tail arm L sub T. This allows us to solve for L sub W H T as shown. The interested viewer can pause to take a closer look at the math. Next, we solve for all the necessary geometric parameters as shown here. I encourage the enthusiastic viewer to also calculate these values. Anyway, these values allow me to lay out the wing horizontal tail vertical tail system as shown here, where all corner points have been labeled with the appropriate coordinates. This will make it much easier to change the original model. And this is what I will do in the next video. As always, please consider giving the video a thumbs up rating on YouTube. This is very important to us video developers. Of course, you should subscribe to my channel as well, if you haven't already. See you in the next part.